Joaquin Phoenix has reached that level where if you were to come to me and say, uh, hey, Joaquin Phoenix is in a two-hour movie about painting a room, and I'd be like, okay, I'm in. Or, hey, Joaquin Phoenix, he's in a two-hour movie where he's watching grass grow. And I'd be like, let's go. Look, it doesn't need to make sense to you. Make sense to me. And he's just that damn good. Period. Welcome to another episode of the Popcorn Confessional. And this is Dave from Nerdbox. And I'm accompanied by my wife, Jen, also from Nerdbox. And on this episode, we are talking about Come On, Come On. So fire up that Jiffy Pop and meet us in the booth. Johnny's a radio journalist traveling the country with his team, interviewing kids about what their thoughts on the future are. He's a bit of a loner, emotionally inept. While traveling, he receives a call from his sister, who needs him to watch her eccentric nine-year-old son, Jesse, while she attempts to help her estranged husband deal with mental illness. A few days turns into a few weeks. Johnny is forced to take Jesse on the road with him, where they begin to bond while they both deal with their own personal struggles. So before we get into it, this is review number 98. Episode 99 of Popcorn Confessional, because we did something a little extra in there for Black Widow. But review 98. So in, in two more reviews, it is 100, and that lands on Spider-Man No Way Home. Yes, that is convenient, and it worked out very nicely. We're going to have an announcement video either with that or separately from that, so definitely stay tuned to that. And like we typically ask, Joaquin Phoenix, what do you think about him? Is he a kook, or is he that damn good? Let us know by leaving that in the comments below. Now, this movie's in black and white. Mm Mm-hmm. And you don't like black and white movies. Didn't bother me at all. <laughs> Remember that when we're going to be talking about some black and white films that you need to watch. It's Joaquin Phoenix. And to go back to like the kook or he's just that damn good, I think it's a little of both. I definitely think he's he's kooky. He's out there. But I think that's what makes him that damn good. Mm-hmm. This is a character an actor-driven film. From start to finish, black and white. It's a very clean black and white. Very yeah. crisp. Mm-hmm. But as you mentioned when you were doing the summary, so it's about relationships. Mm-hmm. And I think all four of the actors, really, I'm going to send them all four leads, essentially, because yeah. they all held their own in this. Mm-hmm. Tremendous acting from all of them. Yeah. Joaquin Phoenix as the uncle, the little kid in the movie, which was Woody Norman. Really, really eccentric, out there, excellent actor. I think this kid deserves an award. (laughs) He should be nominated for Best Supporting Actor, I I, think. I think so. Now, what I'll say about this, though, is he was really good. He's cute. Please don't cram him down our throats for the next five years where you have to throw Mm -hmm. him in every single picture because he was good in it. And then you end up fucking up his life because you're doing that to him. Mm -hmm. Just let him be a kid. Follow King Richard's approach. Now, in this movie, as it plays out, Johnny has to babysit, essentially, for his sister, which Mm -hmm. they're kind of estranged in the movie. There's some tension between them. Yeah, from what I gather, it it goes back to childhood with their mother being mentally ill, and he kind of checked out and wasn't really around for to support his sister when the mom was kind of going downhill. And so because of that, the brother and sister are estranged and they don't talk often. Now I know what you're thinking. All right. So the nephew is going to hang out with the uncle. No big deal. Right. But the nephew doesn't really know the uncle. And there's a a, a cute exchange like early on in the movie. It's like, Oh, what do I call you? Do I call you Papa bear? Do I call you Johnny? Do I call you uncle? And and Joaquin Finn is like, do whatever is comfortable for you. Uh-huh. And he's a bit of a, a introvert, a true introvert, mm-hmm. it seems like. Both of them a little bit. But more Johnny is the introvert, so he has to deal with, all right, I got this little kid in my life now. I got to kind of figure out what to do for him 
mm-hmm. for the next week. But then things get worse between his sister and the husband, mm-hmm. and he has to go on a bit of a road trip with him. Yeah. And the boy is definitely introvert, too, though, because he did mention in the movie that he doesn't have any friends. That does. It's not because he's introverted. It's because he's very smart. He's eccentric. Yeah. He's outspoken. He, he says it in the film. He's like, no other kids talk the way I mm-hmm. do. And I can see why. The way the kid delivers his lines and the things that he talks about is definitely far more advanced than other kids would be talking about. But then you have to think. He has a father that's mentally ill, so you kind of force to age mm-hmm. a lot yeah. sooner than other kids would be yeah. in that situation. So it is a very serious topic that they do cover in the mm-hmm. movie. Yeah. Now, this is one of those films that was... All right, we've gotten in the habit to go into the movies twice a week now. So by Thursday, it's like, oh, man, I got to go back to the theater. Mm-hmm. And so this was a, a pickup movie because we've seen everything else that's out there. And luckily, like we've said, we have two theaters. So the one theater picks up a lot of smaller films, and this was one of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm glad I saw it. Yeah, so am I. I mean, I saw, you said Joaquin Phoenix. I had never heard of the movie. Never saw a trailer for it. Nothing. I had no idea it existed. And, you know, like he said, we'll just kind of go through the movies that the other theater is playing because they do get some of the smaller films. They get the Netflix movies. So just kind of going through, we're like, all right, this movie's got Joaquin Phoenix. So, all right, let's check it out and and see what it's all about. And I'm, I'm glad that we saw it. I mean, Honestly, the the rapport between Joaquin Phoenix and Woody Norman, the little boy, was just, it was so cute. It, it really, and it was so good. Even in the moments where it was serious, it was really, really well scripted. And it was just, it was really, it just was really good. And the little boy and him bouncing off of each other had the whole theater cracking up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I haven't seen a strong pairing with an adult and a child since... Johnny Depp and Freddie Highmore. Now, they were in two movies together. One was Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Don't know why you hate it. It's a great movie. And then they did a follow-up movie where, or maybe vice versa, I'm maybe getting mixed up, where it was about the creator of Peter Pan or something like that. And that story was excellent, too. And the two of them, the way they interacted was amazing. That was first. Finding Neverland, I think yeah. that was. So they did that movie first, and then when... When Johnny Depp was going to do Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, he requested Freddie Highmore Mm -hmm. because he had such a great relationship with him and he just loved the kids acting. Now, if I have to think about it, right, think about all the little kid actors that we've seen over the years. This is probably the third best kid actor that I've seen out there. So you got Mm -hmm. Freddie Highmore, you got Dakota Fanning and this little kid. So that's Mm -hmm. if that tells you something, I know maybe Dakota Fanning annoys you, but. She was great as a kid. It's a movie about relationships. Mm-hmm. It's a drama. It has some comedy in it. It's in black and white. So some of those things may turn you off. As I've mentioned in many reviews, I'm not a fan of movies that are dramas. She's not really a fan of black and white films. But I would buy this one. And I would yeah. watch it again. And it's something you can watch with the entire family. Yeah, I think that the entire family would enjoy watching it to the, together just yeah. because of the the rapport between the two of them. I mean, it really is just like an uncle and a and a nephew and kind of the trials and tribulations that they go through having not really met before. So, yeah, I think everyone would enjoy it. Mm-hmm. And then there's uh, the husband, which I have to call out, Scoot or Scott McNary. It's Scoot McNary. <laughs> he... Was phenomenal and the small screen time that he had, yeah, excellent. Yeah. I truly believe that he had some issues going on there. He played yeah. it tremendously. Oh yeah, he and definitely came off as like a, a a person who was like bipolar or schizophrenic or something. He was he was spot on. And it was the way they portrayed that marriage was very good too. Mm-hmm. So it's almost a little bit of an educational thing in there too. You yeah. get to see. What the impacts of somebody with mental illness has on other people in the family. And then yeah. what extent somebody will go to make sure that that person gets help. Yeah. Especially like the little boy, you know, when he's like, oh, is my dad sick again? Mm-hmm. You know, and that's kind of how he relates to it. His dad's sick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do you rate this one? 
I am going to give this movie a solid A. Same here. A. It's easy. Blew my expectations away, even though I had Joaquin Phoenix in it. Everybody else was excellent in the movie. It's worth watching again. It's worth owning. If I had nothing else to see in the theaters, I wouldn't mind seeing this in the theaters again. Again, free pass. What can you do? All right, well. Don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on the notifications, and share. Yes, please share. And stay tuned. Because Review 100 is coming. Till the next one.